Do you guys know that China was once struggling with extremely poor schools to now becoming home to the world's leading AI-powered classrooms by giving the most advanced technology to the poorest parts of their country? Well, I'm here to talk all about it from when China had no educational system to now becoming the world's leading source of AI-powered classrooms. And I'll be talking about it while I do my makeup. Okay, so around 1949, Mao Zedong led the People's Republic of China and he made mass literacy a national goal. Now at this time, the literacy rate was below 20%, which is extremely low. And resources were super scarce, especially in rural areas, okay? And they lagged behind city areas really significantly. And under Mao's leadership, after about 15 years, schools and universities began to close and millions of high school students were sent to work in farms and factories and the college completion rate dropped from what was around 10% to about four and a half percent okay so between 1966 to 1976 around a decade people were not being educated and it was considered basically like a lost generation okay now after Mao Deng Xiaoping restored the National College Entry Exam, or Gaoko, which I'm probably butchering the name. And in 1977, 5.7 million people took the exam, competing for a little over 200,000 spots in university. Okay, so this move really reopened the doors for higher education in China, and it created a brand new era of modernization and productivity. Okay, so fast forward to 2001, President Zhang Zemin, or Zhang Zemin, I'm not really sure how to say that he began to push to modernize school okay so his goal was kind of to expand the digital infrastructure and promote digital literacy so people can understand how to use technology and this is when they began to integrate tech into education okay so this guy is trying to reduce the education gap between cities and like basically more rural areas again and also prepare basically all students for the digital age okay and about 15 years later in 2015 the Chinese government made a priority to make every single school in China to have access to the internet, even in remote villages. And by this time, 85% of primary school had broad broadband access. And a program called Three Accesses and Two Platforms ensured that teachers and students across the entire nation had access to digital resources. Okay, so by 2015, virtually all of China had access to the internet, all of Chinese schools. But what's crazy is that by 2017, China was already gearing up to be leading the world in AI by 2030. Okay, and in 2014, a software called Squirrel AI was founded, and it became China's first large-scale digital AI learning platform and it has since built a network of over 24,000 I'm sorry 24 million students through 3,000 learning centers and this new system broke world records okay creating over a hundred thousand ways for students to learn or a hundred thousand unique learning paths and students were able to take like online math lessons in record high numbers in the span of 24 hours and mastery rates and synchronized learning jumped from about 40 percent to 85 and answer accuracy jumped from 22% to 87%. Okay, so they were not messing around. And this was in 2017. Now fast forward to 2022, China unveiled China's largest or the world's largest uh, learning platform, AI platform, or digital educational platform, I should say it's more accurate. And by April 2025, that platform had over 164 million digital users. And I should also mention that before all of this in 2020, 98% of poor villages in China had access to like four G networks, as well as AI-powered smart classrooms. And this helps students in poor areas increase their mastery rates from 56% to 89% in just one month. All right, so what can we learn from China's journey here? Well, for starters, we can learn that visionary leadership matters, okay? So leadership can take a country from having virtually no education to educating even the poorest villages with the most modern technology. And another lesson is the importance of investing in infrastructure. China invested about $200 billion in AI, but they did it in a way that didn't replace teachers. Instead, they used it to kind of like automate menial tasks and kept the creativity and mentorship left for teachers to handle, which is another important lesson of empowering teachers with AI instead of replacing them. And another super important lesson I think the world can learn from what China did here is closing the inequality gap, especially when it comes to education and access to resources that can really advance the country and just giving 
every single child an equal chance by prioritizing or at least making policies that target low-income areas and that don't neglect them which is where I think a lot of countries including the United States especially go go wrong but China is also not perfect and another lesson that we can learn from maybe what they can improve is the balancing of ethics with innovation okay so China's rapid progress in AI has raised questions about privacy concerns as well as the role of technology in society and we can all learn from what went wrong in China or what China can improve when creating our own form of implementing AI into our schools and in our education systems by ensuring that human core values are leading and driving innovation and that we don't neglect them. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. I don't know how I feel about these hair rollers and how they look. I think it looks good. I don't know. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm curious to know what you guys think you can learn from China in your state or your country's educational system. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, all sources in the comments.